I want to yeah. talk about your book because I didn't know you had written a book until yeah, I started doing it. a little research on you for this show. Mm-hmm. And oh, I was reading, I want to read one of the reviews that I found because it speaks a lot to what we're talking about today, but it just, as I was reading these words, I was like, hoo, hoo, hoo. so the review says, April pours her heart and soul into writing this book. She speaks, speaks on cultural issues we as Black women have faced and endured. This book helped me to realize I'm allowed to be who I am without conforming to expectations placed by others and society. I highly recommend this book to anybody searching for their inner voice and peace. The book is called Allowed to Be Me. Mm-hmm. And I would love to hear um, the story behind the creation of this book, who you were intending to read it, and how, I mean, being an author, I feel like is a life-changing event. So how has it helped shape, you know, the development of your story as you continue to share with people online? So the journey of the book, um, honestly, it was, it was probably, I wrote that book probably uh, after one of the lowest points in my life. Um, I actually, I took a lot of sleeping pills um, because I was just, I'm not, you know, just like every black, one, I was just tired. I was just, you know, I was just tired. And I, and I, I did that in a, a literal sense. Like I'm tired. I just want to, I literally said this as I was taking the pills. I just want to rest. I just mm-hmm. want to rest. Um, I, I don't, I didn't necessarily want to kill myself. But I was just so tired of everything that I was going through, everything. And so I talk about it in my book, how um, when I went to the hospital, I'm, I'm a firm believer of everything happens for a reason. Um, because, you know, when you when you are connected to a higher power, you do understand and you do start looking at the signs and things that are being placed in front of you and how that applies to your life. Um, and I was in the hospital and there were three black women that took care of me, Mm -hmm. Uh, three black women. Mm -hmm. And when I say them women poured into me, like it was, I cried so much in the hospital and they, they, when, when they, when I woke up, the first one was like, you are so pretty. Your skin is just, he was like, and I was like, who are you? <laughs> you know, like, I'm like, because I was out for a couple of days. I took that many pills where I was out for a couple of days. And so, um, and com- but coming in and out, I can hear kind of like the conversations of, you know, them kind of like talking about me and some of the things that I was doing because I had Black Business Women in St. Louis. Like everybody thought that I was just so, you know, and this is another thing that Black women deal with, you know, everybody feels like you have it together. You know, you have it. Yeah. You know, you strong, you know, you're going to make it. You got this. I mean, I was doing so much that nobody really knew, you know, mentally, like what I was going through and how tired I was and how fed up I was, with, you know, just like I said, the health issues, the, yeah. you know, um, my marriage, um, you know, my children, I was going, my children had health issues. So I was just going through so many things. Um, but once I woke up, you know, the first girl, you know, she just kept raving on how pretty I was and woo, woo, woo. Um, then the the second girl, she was like, she actually knew me from the radio show and like her people had owned the place and every, like they were part of that. And she was like, I know. And, and then that was, <laughs> you know, and she was like, yeah. so she was like, I, I, you know, my husband, he was telling them about a lot of things I was doing. The she was like, he was telling me you are like amazing. Like, I can't believe you're in here. And whoop, whoop, whoop. So that was the second. And then the third woman, oh, girl, when she told me her story. Yeah. Oh, I couldn't do nothing. Be like, girl, why the hell is you in here? <laughs> oh, she was. She had just gotten like a, a very a, like a near fatal car accident. Like you can see, wow. she still had the scars, and she was like, "I'm here against my doctor's advisory because I got seven kids. Oh. I got to take it." Like she was, and she made me. When I say I was crying, me and her were just like crying and talking all night. Because I had to have somebody sit with me because I was on suicide watch. So she mm-hmm. was one of the ones that was sitting with me. And mm-hmm. she just, like, we talked all night. We cried all night. And she was like, you are amazing. She was like, she was just telling, like, she was like, if I see you in this predicament again, I'm going to be on you. She was like, <laughs> you have so much. And I was like, these women don't know me from a can of paint. Yeah. And they literally, for those days I was in the hospital, poured into me and made, made sure I ate made sure I, you know, just like, 
it was just the most the when I say I will never forget that experience that was the turning point in my life where one I realized that black women are um, like I will we the shit yes and and I and when we show up for each other that, ooh, the that way energy that like girl I'm like we we have the power to to uplift anybody to pour mm. into anybody to despite our struggles we right. gonna make sure that the people around us are good yeah. And that, and, and, and so that, but also I realized like I've been sleeping on myself, you know, like mm-hmm. I've been, I've, I literally and figuratively, I played so <laughs> small, I, I yeah. was playing so small for yeah. so long, all this stuff I was doing. And I, it was never big to me because for me, and I think a lot of us think like this, I wanted more. I knew yeah. I, was, I was able to do more, but I wanted it you know, you, you have this impatient, you're impatient. Like I yeah. know that this is where I'm supposed to be. So I ain't even worried about this list. Of, even though it wasn't small, uh, what I was doing was nowhere near small, you know? Um, Cause I was, you know, holding events where, you know, what's been the first black prosecutor came on. He interviewed me on his radio show. Yeah. So I wasn't doing nothing small, yeah. but I felt like it was, you know, right. I felt like I, this ain't big enough. This ain't, so I'm not going to hype it up this ain't big enough. I um, mean, for them to hype me up and be like, girl, no, this is huge. Like, yeah. what are you talking about? Um, that was like a real big turning point in my life. And um, I talk about that in my book. And so when I wrote my book though, I, I just, I was, this was like after I had lost my weight, I had been in the hospital for that. Um, and I was just like, I was, I was in the journey of like taking my power back yeah. of, not listening to other people, you know, setting my boundaries. Um, one chapter of my book is called Fuck Your Expectations. That's, yeah. that's the chapter, you know, and that's the shirts I had. I had shirts, you know, and that's just, and that's just how I live my life um, because there are so many expectations placed on Black women, so many stereotypes. These things we should be, li- we should be doing. Everybody has what we should be doing, what we should right. be, how we should be acting. What about what you should be doing? <laughs> What about what you're doing right now that you should be focus on you? (laughs) And so we focus so much on these things and we try to apply them in our lives and we try to be, you know, we try to take things with grace. We want to take care of everybody. We want to, we can't be angry. The angry black woman said, you know, we can't be angry. We can't be this. Um, and if we do speak up about something, we're bitter and we're, we're, it's just all type of bullshit. That we have a lot of judgment that comes down on us because people have been allowed to have an opinion about black women to without us saying without us being able to say anything, without us being able to speak up and stand on what we say, without us saying something and then somebody be like, You angry black woman be like, Well, no, I didn't mean it. You damn right, I'm angry. I got a thousand and one fucking reasons to be angry. Yes, exactly. That's why I said, you know, back then. I didn't want that stereotype, but now it's like, I don't give a fuck. If you see me as an angry black woman, that's how you see me. Yeah. But there are millions of women out here who see me as a woman who is speaking her mind, who is standing on what she got, what she's saying, and not gonna let nobody move me. That's nobody. Tough. I don't care. I don't care what you think. Yeah. You know? So and then and then the more that we do it, the more they have to say because they think if if we continue talking then, you know, they're allowed to say something back to us. And one of the things that I try to teach as much as I can, especially to BIPOC women and women of color is just like learning how to stand up for yourself with Mm -hmm. your words. You know, Mm -hmm. it's one thing, you know, we do have those stereotypes that follow us around and it, it gets to be to a point where our power is in still being able to communicate for ourselves, stand up for ourselves, advocate for ourselves without like tapping into those stereotypes and it's absolutely possible but it's just that there's so many women who still to this day do not want to speak up because it's like I would rather not be a stereotype than stand Mm -hmm. up for myself so I'm going to continue to play small and one of the things that I love about you is that you're no longer willing to do that but not just for yourself and you know I can't believe you did it again one of the episodes for this show is about how When Black women are empowered and confident, everyone around them is empowered and confident in a different way than Mm -hmm. other women, like Black women specifically. And that's because we're not going to let the deserving stay where they are when we know that they are, they need to be coming along on the journey. We're not going to leave you here. We're not leaving you here. 
Let go. Just like your nurses. I'm gonna, nurse gonna, I'm gonna be here. Yeah. I'm gonna be here to pump you up. If ain't nobody here gonna be here to pump you up, I'm gonna be here to do it. I'm gonna be here to motivate you, inspire you, all that good stuff. Because at the end of the day, I know that there are so many people around you who don't want to do that, who don't want to see you be great, who don't want to see you be strong, really strong. I ain't talking about strong and where people can take advantage or people can, you don't have, you know, bound and you just, you a strong black woman. Right. I talk about that in my book. How can you be strong? How, 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 how is that being a strong black woman? No, a strong black woman is you being confident in who you are, knowing who you are, what you love, what you like, what, what your, what your boundaries are, what, yeah. you know, what your beliefs are even, you know, yeah. like we, we, allow so many people to feed us so many things you know and it's just like we we have to be strong in ourselves Mm -hmm. like from the inside out that's that's our strength Mm -hmm. you know healing yourself is your strength speaking up for yourself is your strength Mm -hmm. having boundaries for yourself is your strength you know being able to say that's fine you you see me as an angry black woman okay Mm -hmm. okay that's your strength Fuck a stereotype. Fuck a, you know, what, what, what society has to say. Because at the end of the day, society ain't never going to walk a, walk a mile in black women's shoes. And if they do, they ain't going to be able to handle it. I tell you that. <laughs> I'll tell, I tell you that. that. <laughs> so, so yep. you, you, we have the power and we, we don't realize how powerful we are. All these changes, you know, I'm, I think I made a status not so long ago um, where I was talking about, you know, what if a black, what, what if we didn't really have strong black women like Harriet Tubman? Yeah. Come on now. What yeah. would we be? Right. If we didn't really have strong black women that said, fuck what you're talking about. Yeah. This is what I'm standing on. And this right. is how we're gonna move. We wouldn't, the world, this this entire nation, I'm gonna just say I'm we just gonna keep it to the American. We wouldn't be as advanced and progressive as we would. Black women stand strong behind everybody and everything. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. 